Hi, this is Todd Malicote, the SEO faculty for Market Motive and Online Marketing Consultant at StuntDouble.com, and I'm here to give the search engine optimization fundamentals and best practices. We're going to help you better understand SEO and the terminology associated with. This is a multi-part series, and we're going to look at how search engine optimization really is just mainly about Google. We're going to also look at 20 signals of an optimized web page and some of the page dimension optimization techniques uh, in the first part of this series. Over the series, we're going to look at the best practices issues for the domain, for the page, and for what I like to call the other dimension, being duplicate content, organizational issues, site indexing and accessibility, technology, and site speed issues. Before we dive into all that, I want to talk about the local, social, mobile convergence. At the heart of SEO and at the heart of search is this convergence of social, local, and mobile. People aren't just searching from their desktop anymore. They're enabling location-based services. They're getting recommendations from their friends through social search. And throughout all of these, throughout this Salomo, if you will, is the 800-pound gorilla that is the Google. We have Google Plus with social, which is catching up to Facebook. We have local with Google Places or Plus Local, the convergence there. And then the mobile aspect being Android and Chrome browsers, also owned by Google. So they have staggering numbers in each of these different areas. 540 million users already on Google Plus. Not quite Facebook yet, but that's a pretty significant amount of people. And there's over 100 billion queries per month on Google. This is mind-boggling, really, when you start to think about it. Over a billion Android devices activated. You can see that Google is really at the heart of search. People have even started to say, I Google it instead of I search for it. They have the dominant market share. So when we talk about search engine optimization, we're really talking about Google optimization. And most of the time, we're specifically talking about Google. It's Google's world. We're just living in it. And because of that, we need to abide by and understand the Google guidelines. We're playing within their world. We need to know their rule set. They offer a starter guide for search engine optimization. And while there's not a lot of hardcore advice in it, it gives you some good general guidelines. Mainly within Webmaster Tools, you just kind of have to agree to play by their rules and not participate in link schemes, not cloak your website, no sneaky redirects. The intent of what you're doing with your SEO strategy is sometimes important to Google and you don't want to violate their terms of service otherwise you could find yourself in violation and suffer from a filter or a penalty. So start there with the Webmaster Quality Guidelines and understand that they're not going to tell you how to rank for their search engine of course but they will tell you the rules to play within their game. So we're going to look at the different dimensions of SEO throughout the course of this presentation. I like to think of SEO as this nonlinear dimension, and these are the four dimensions that I see. The page, the web page itself, the domain that that page is on, the off-site dimension being all the variables and signals and factors that affect how that page ranks, and of course the keyword relevance or the other dimension, the other things that impact how your site ranks, things like your site speed or just other aspects of your site, the site age perhaps. They all kind of fall within these dimensions, not always within one or the other. Sometimes they fall into multiple dimensions, but all the signals and all the factors and all the things that affect your site somehow fall within these four dimensions of SEO. So we're going to start this presentation with looking at an optimized page, something that a site that's done well, one that's near and dear to my heart and ranks pretty well in the local search page. And we're going to look at the things that it's doing right, the reason it is an optimized page. And we'll start there and then we'll describe each of the vernacular and terminology throughout the course of this presentation so that you better understand these by the time you get through this series. So we're going to look at MiamiFishing.com, one of my favorite websites, again near and dear to my heart here, and 20 signals that this site's sending to Google that says this is a site of value that should rank for these key terms. So the first thing is the keyword in the domain. This is something that you can't get obviously for every site, you can't go back and retrofit. Exact match domains are kind of tough. I suggest partial match domains for the most part myself as a good rule of thumb, but if you can get a short exact match domain, it certainly helps. Having that keyword does help and is a signal of an optimized page. Being consistent with your non-www subdomain. So in this case, we went with non-www. If you use www, 
make sure that you're just being consistent with the way you link within your site and the way you get links from other sites. The keyword in the title, the company name at the end, is generally accepted best practice depending on the importance of your branding, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Number four is the keyword image in alt text. You see at the top left, in the very top of our code, in the very top of our site, we have an image that says Miami Fishing. That's important. That's what we do. That's our most important term. And we have the alt text that supports that. In the main body area, we have a nice carousel rotating that actually sends users on a nice path throughout our site to show them the boat, to show them who we are, to show them what we catch, etc. And it drives them based on those images to those different areas with a nice defined user path. It also has proper alt text, good calls to action in each of those to drive people to the areas of the website that we've deemed important. Number six would be keywords in the heading tag. Well, H1s and their value have been somewhat debated in recent years. It is a good best practice to have those keywords in there, to call people's attention, just to have a mention of those keywords within your heading tag. Uh, it's essentially a title of the page. It's like the title tag. It should definitely be different, but you should have some variation of your title tag there. You can see we're also linking outbound to our social media profiles, sending a little bit of authority to those associating those with our website and letting Google know by the signal that that's us as well, that we maintain these social profiles on Facebook, on YouTube, on Yelp, on Twitter, and it helps those pages to get a little bit more link equity from our site and to rank well also. Good authority sites to link out to. So outbound links to your social media profiles. Next, we have the keyword in the body copy. Uh, suggestion of at least 150 to 200 words of content. You always want to have some text content on your page and just write about the topic of the page. It's important to have that body copy in there. The amount is certainly debatable. Uh, people sometimes may say 100 or 500 or 200 words. Uh, the amount's debatable, but you need some level of body copy and certainly include those keywords, not stuffing them in there, but just including them a couple times. Number nine is content assets for universal search. In our case, we have a nice optimized YouTube video that we can also have rank on YouTube and that will help us as a content asset. People spend a lot of time. It's a two minute video. So the time on site is higher when someone watches that video and they have a good idea of the experience as well. So number 10 is synonymous terms, writing around the type of terms. In our case, it's fishing in Miami. So we say things like anglers and different types of fishing, deep dropping for swordfish and sight fishing for mahi-mahi. And these support the targeted keywords on our main shorter tail phrases being Miami fishing, Miami fishing charters. The next area that we're going to look at, and again, this is a main page, our home page. We're actually looking at three different pages. We're looking at the main home page, and then this is a sub page, and then we'll look at a third page for number 20 of the 20 signals in an optimized page. Number 11 is keywords in the domain, in the category. Uh, so up to two dashes, this means we could have three words. In our case, you see what we catch, the subcategory, direct subdirectory URL. We want to have some keywords in there, probably no more than two dashes. We don't want to go too many directories deep, but depending on the size of your site, the most important thing is to have a dash in between words and no more than two or three words usually is good best practice. You can go beyond that, but I wouldn't go beyond four or five words. Keyword in the page name URL. So you can see this one's named Atlantic-Sailfish. You'll also notice that it's an extensionless URL with just one dash between the keywords. Again, it could be two dashes, could be three words or four words perhaps, but I like two to three words. That's a good place to kind of narrow it down. You usually don't need more than that to describe your URL, and it is descriptive to the user. The extensionless URL allows us to change this content or change our platform without having to redirect the content. It stays in the same place, and we can always have our Atlantic Sailfish page in the same place without having to do a redirect on it. The fresh content organized and linked from the home page. This is under our reports tab. While we do just kind of have static content that's always there about the information on fish, about who we are, what we catch, we also have some fresh content, which is our fishing reports, which says this is what happened this month. This is what we caught in the past month. It doesn't have to be weekly or daily, but 
perhaps monthly is good. And then we have that linked from our home page. We also have it on the sidebar or in the right hand side where if we do a new blog post, which is essentially the report, that shows up so that it's linked and indexed immediately. We also have navigation links as text so that Google can read these effectively. You could do this with CSS and make them look a little bit nicer. We have keyword in our image alt text for the main body image. We have body copy that's trustworthy and well-researched and informational that keeps people on the site and keeps our engagement level high. As mentioned a little bit lower down in the site, we have the internal links to the current blog posts and new content. This keeps our fresh content indexed as soon as it gets published. We have our business name information, name, address, phone number, which should always be consistent and on every page of the website. We have outbound links to our important industry organizations and manufacturers like the National Association of Charter Operators or the International Game Fish Association or Pen Rod and Reels. And these just help affiliate us with good neighborhoods, with people that are in the fishing industry that are authority and spread a little bit of that link love. They're wary as well as associate our site with these positive industry organizations. And finally, the last page, and one of the most important in search engine optimization is the sitemap. And you'll see that it is right at sitemap, it's extension list, and it's linked from every single page. And it says sitemap in the title, and in the heading, and also in the URL. So that sitemap's really important, and that's the 20th signal of a well-optimized page. So obviously this was a whirlwind of information to cover 20 signals in less than 10 minutes and talk about why these pages are optimized. So we're going to individually dive into the organization of a page and website, the URL best practices, title, meta, and image best practices, body copy issues, and accessibility issues. We'll dive into these each individually throughout the course of this series, and I encourage you to go back and watch the 20 signals of an optimized page after you thoroughly understand each of these areas to better understand why each of those signals is important and helps the site to rank for better search rankings. Thank you for joining me on part one. Enjoy part two.